Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be giving makeup I didn't love one more chance. So I filmed a video like this last month and you guys seem to really enjoy it and I figured it'd be fun to kind of keep this as an ongoing series every once in a while, not only so you guys can see why I don't love a product on camera, but also because sometimes, you know, if you've already bought a product, you want to find a way to make it work. And hopefully in these videos, I can share some tips and tricks for trying to salvage something even if it's not quite a perfect match for you. So if you're new here, my name's Kelly. I upload four videos a week. I would love to see you again, and let's go ahead and hop into it. All right, I've zoomed in a bit and also turned my lights down, but so far I have on foundation and eyebrows since I don't have anything in those categories, but I did skip applying any product on my under eyes because I have something that we're gonna try on my under eyes. But before we do that, I actually wanna do my cream contour slash bronzer first. So I'm just gonna kinda tuck my hair away. Also, turn down my brightness even more, actually, because I felt like I was a little washed out. But you guys, I wanted to love this so bad. This is the Danessa Myricks Contour Balm, and I picked up the shade two. I just don't love this. I, first of all, think it pulls so warm for a contour, and you'll see that in a minute. But whenever I wear it, I just never think it looks that nice. I don't know, we'll see. I'll show you on camera. Maybe we can save it today. I like to do this step before concealer so I can kind of like clean up if I go a little too high with the contour. So the brand says you can use this any way basically. They say brush, sponge, fingers. I've tried all of the above, but I like brush the best. And this is my favorite brush for cream contour or like any cream bronzer product. This is the Real Techniques sculpting brush. I've tried a few different brushes with this. I just, ugh. so I pick up not too, too much on my brush and then I just kind of like to tap it into the skin. I have tried this over and under foundation. I've tried this with a ton of different brushes and I will say it's incredibly easy to work with, but I, well, it is looking a little bit better here actually. I just don't love the tone of it but I do feel like I applied my foundation long enough ago that it's like fully set down. So maybe that's making it apply better. Maybe it doesn't work as well with a really dewy base. It's looking okay. I do feel like it's applying better than normal because sometimes when I apply it, I feel like it can get a little bit patchy. Whereas right now, I think maybe I need to just, maybe this is weird, but I might start trying to apply it over a powder because I just feel like this is looking way better than normal and not that I have powder on my skin, but the brand does say you can apply it over a powder. But I think because my skin was already like pretty set, this is looking better. I'm just kind of taking whatever's left on my brush and applying this along my jawline a bit. Okay, so far so good. Now the next one that I am not liking and I have not liked almost every time I've tried it, the Milk Eyeshadow Base. Ugh. Okay, this is called the Hydra Grip Eye Primer. They say it can be an eyeshadow base and a concealer base. So far I don't like it for either, but today's the day we're gonna give it another chance. So that's why I didn't apply any product to my under eyes when I was doing foundation. So I'm actually gonna do both of these at once. I'm gonna put some down here to prime under my eyes. This is so weird. It always feels like there's nothing on here and I'm like, is there any product on here? Like it almost feels like I have an empty tube. And I think it's just the texture of it is very slippy. It doesn't feel as like wet as you might think. So it doesn't feel like you're applying anything. Um, I'm also gonna apply it on my eyelids. My critique as an eyeshadow base is that I have visible veins on my eyelids and this is clear. So when I'm applying my eyeshadow on top of it, I can still see all of those veins and I don't love that. So what I'm gonna try today is adding a little bit of concealer over top. Since it does say it can already be a concealer primer, I'm like, maybe I can still get the primer effect, but also get a little bit of coverage, you know? We're gonna try everything every way. I feel like most reviews I've heard on this, people don't like it, but I have heard of a few people that like swear by it. So I'm just like, mm, can I get this to work? But what I'm gonna try it with today, I wanna give it a great chance. I'm gonna try it with this concealer that I recently picked up because you guys talked me into it and I'm really liking it. This is the Kosas concealer. Now my shade's not perfect for me, it's 3W, but this concealer normally lays very well. So I'm like, let's give the under eye primer 
a chance with a concealer that is really working well for me right now. I also put two little dots on my eyelids so that we can conceal a little bit. So I'm gonna take my sponge now and tap this out. So the issue I kept running into using it for an under eye primer was that it was making my under eyes look so dry and it was making the concealer separate. And I'm like, what's the point? It looks better without it. But this already is, is looking better. And I think it's because this is just a, a pretty good concealer. Um, that being said, it's hard for me to recommend a primer that's partially targeted to conceal or like prime your under eyes when you have to be very careful about which concealers it works with. Like there are some and actually almost everyone I've tried, I don't like it with. But this is looking better. And I had a feeling it would just because I've noticed that Kosas one just lays so well and like doesn't separate or cling. Also what I'm gonna do, this is the EcoTool sponge. This is kind of cool. This is a biodegradable sponge. They say it's the first of its kind, which I hope more brands start doing this. It's nice too because it has this flat edge. So what I'm gonna do is take whatever concealer is left with the flat edge and kind of stamp under where I did the cream contour just to clean it up. Just have like a little bit of a sharper line there. Now, ever since I started using this sponge, I've been doing this step and I really like it. And then I'll just take the butt of my sponge and kind of like soften that. Okay, it worked better. But again, it's still hard for me to recommend this when I've when this is the only concealer <clears throat> that I've been able to get it to work with. But So the next product I wanna try that I'm kind of back and forth about is this from Freck. So I've used this, I think three different times now. This is their freckle pen. So I like the idea of faux freckles, but whenever I've tried them before using like eyeshadow or an eyebrow product, I never liked the effect. So I was like, let me try it with a product specifically designed to apply fake freckles. So I picked this up recently. You heard me mention it in a recent video. I, I'm not totally sold on this, but I feel like every time I use it, I'm getting a little bit better. I feel like there's a bit of a learning curve. So let's try this today what i realized with this is you have to make sure there's a lot of product on the end of it because if there's not and there's hardly any left you'll apply it and the dot will have like a brush line in it because there wasn't enough product so you kind of have to dot on a big glob of product and then move it around at least that's what i've noticed so far so what i've been doing is starting with just a couple of dots like i don't do a lot at once because you don't want it to set down that much. And then I take my finger and tap it out. So I've noticed like the kind of bigger globs like that give me a better effect. And then I just tap it out. I don't know though. Maybe I need to wear this without foundation because I feel like once I start tapping it out, which is what you're supposed to do because obviously you can't just leave that line like that, but. Once I start tapping it out, I feel like my foundation then looks a little funny. Okay, let me let it sit for longer because that's what they say to do. Maybe I'm not letting it sit enough. They say put them kind of far apart and let it sit for a bit. I don't know. I feel like the first time I applied this, I did a lot at once and then tried to tap it out like that and I left it for a while. But I felt like once I did that, some of them were kind of already set and then they just looked like red globs. I don't know. If you guys have this, let me know because it looked so easy. Like I would see the videos of people just like dotting it on and then tapping it out and they're like, boom, perfect. And I'm like, it is not that simple. Okay, here we go. See, when I wait for too long, I don't know. I, I don't know if that looks good on camera, but in person, they definitely look so fake. Like I'll add in some close up shots so you guys can see. I don't know, I think maybe what's throwing me off is that I have freckles and I'm like, these don't look natural, but I guess faux freckles never look that natural, but I thought with this product, they would. It might be looking cute on camera, but I, I, it's not in person. Let me let me get you zoomed in. Is this, I don't know. I'll also, like I said, I'll try to take some pictures and videos on my phone so you can see it. I just think they look super fake. Okay, I applied a little bit of highlighter and now I wanna apply a little bit of blush over top of these, just thinking like, Maybe if I do a little bit of a sunburnt blush application, that can just make these freckles look a little bit more natural, like, oh, I'm sun-kissed. Mm, I'm not sold. But now that we've used the eyeshadow primer, I wanna go ahead and use some eyeshadow on top of it just to see what we're thinking. 
and I wanted to use my Wanderlust palette since this is a favorite and I've had a lot of requests recently to do more looks with this and I figured this would be nice to kind of continue to test out the eyeshadow primer since I already know how this one works. So I'm thinking kind of a subtle green look. I want to start with this lighter brown in the crease. Uh, my lids did crease a little bit with the concealer, but I mean that would normally happen since I didn't set it, but I wondered if it would because we had on the primer, but it, it, they still did crease. So I usually just kind of tap it out with my finger and don't really have any problems. Now, just using concealer as my eyeshadow primer is something that I do pretty often, but I'm curious to see how much of a difference we'll have with the primer underneath of it. One more thing I wanna try besides this is no concealer over top, but using the primer and then using a really pigmented powder that's similar to my skin tone in hopes that that can kind of conceal the veins. Now I wanna take this dark brown called Nostalgia on a pretty dense, thin brush and smudge that onto the outer half of the lash line. And then I kind of, I'm trying to drag this out just a little bit. All right, there's that, just a kind of like a rough outline. And then I'm gonna take this light green called Majesty on my finger. And I want this to be slightly more subtle, so I'm not trying to do a lot, I'm actually gonna tap it on so we get more of a scattered effect. So with this color, if you put down a base or you did it with a brush and like sprayed your brush or you just built it up, you can get it like really metallic, but that's not the effect I want. I want it a little more subtle like this. So I'm just picking up a small amount and tapping in. Okay, my camera battery died, so I had to take a break for a second. So I did mascara off camera. And then you know what? I added some more freckles. Do I think they look good or natural? No, but like they're kind of fun. They're cute. I don't know. So now I picked this up. Whoops. I picked this up in my Sephora haul and you saw me try this on. This duo is the Pillow Talk duo from Charlotte Tilbury. It is very iconic. It is like one of her most well-known products. And it's not that I didn't like the formula of either and I actually like the lip liner more, but I was not in love with the shade Pillow Talk, but I wanted to give it another chance today. Though, honestly, with this green eyeshadow, I would probably prefer a peachier lip. Like the formula is nice and the lip liner is super creamy and so is the lipstick. I don't know though, I just feel so so about the color. What do you guys think? I might have liked it more with more of a pinky eyeshadow look, so that's probably what I'll pair it with next. Okay, after giving these products another chance, I don't know that anything is like fully redeemed itself, but I do feel like I'm finding better ways to use these products, though I still don't know that I like highly recommend any of them aside from like the palette the concealer the blush like things that i were not part of the makeup i'm giving another chance you guys know what i mean but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to subscribe and i'll go ahead and see you in my next one bye